Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Laura. Now, thanks for the call, Angel, but tonight is out, unless you'll settle for hot dogs and pop. I had a client, but he got killed before he paid me. You know, a thing like that's not only murder, it's a crime. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves. The case of everybody's gun. Before the Falcon solves tonight's case, let's listen to this. Miracle Whip has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip only one of its kind. Miracle Whip best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing. Try it yourself. See why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Now, the case of everybody's gun. It's Wednesday night in New York, and tall, sleepy-eyed Spencer Hollister has just admitted Jack Landis to his expensive penthouse apartment. Landis, a stocky, good-looking young fellow, sits on the arm of a chair, lighting a cigarette, while Hollister walks to his desk, opens it, and reaches in. He has just promised Landis a $5,000 check. But when he pulls his hand from the drawer, instead of a checkbook, he has a gun in it. All right, Landis, don't move. I'm not moving. You don't seem surprised. I've learned to expect anything. Well, will it surprise you to learn that I know all about you? Not terribly. You don't believe me. Well, I happen to know your credentials are forged. I happen to know you've converted almost all the checks to cash already, and you expect to cash those you collected this weekend first thing in the morning and clear out. All right, you go to the head of the class. Now what? You have over $100,000 cash that you've swindled people out of by trading on their generosity. Rather nasty business, wouldn't you say? There's really nothing lower than a charity fake. I'll go sit in a corner. People will be furious if they hear about it. If? You laid your plans carefully, but there are a few things you've overlooked. For instance, you have me on your sucker list as someone with a lot of cash and no brains, right? Next time, I'll give my prospective donors an IQ test. Underestimating my intelligence wasn't your biggest mistake. Overestimating my bank account was. Don't tell me you're a pauper, Hollister. Worse. A debtor. Don't let this penthouse fool you. Or the name Hollister, either. The family fortune is a thing of the past. I'm in hock. You're breaking my heart. Don't feel too bad about it. You can help me out. Can I? You're giving me $75,000 in cash tonight. I didn't know I was so generous. I'm not fooling. Otherwise, I'll call the police. I thought you disapproved of the way I made the money. That's why I want to relieve you of it. Well, what do you know? Brother Rhett. Well, since we so thoroughly disapprove of each other, don't you think we ought to cut this conversation short? I think. Good. Then let's go get the cash. 
I've been told money talks, and that's a conversation I'd much rather listen to. Homicide Squad, Sergeant Corbett speaking. Oh, good morning, Dimples. Uh, oh, oh, now don't tell me. Let me guess. Anything your little heart desires. Animal, vegetable, or mineral? Uh, vegetable. Is it a private detective? How did you know? They call him the Falcon. On the nose. His name is Mike Waring? Bullseye. I give up. Who is it? Two other guys. <laughs> All right, Waring, what's up? Well, I just lost a client. And I thought you were such a good detective. Yeah, so did my client. That's why he hired me. What changed his mind for him? A bullet. You mean I got to go to work? Well, that's up to you. I'm just reporting the murder like a good little citizen. When did it happen? Sometime last night. Uh, name of the stiff? Spencer Hollister. Two L's. Where will I find him? Garraway Apartments, penthouse. You there now? Yep. Well, stay there. I'll be right over. All right, but as long as you're taking down the vital statistics, uh, wouldn't you like to know the name of the murderer? You've got it? Got a pretty good idea. Yeah, I'm listening, Waring. Hollister hired me to check up on a character named Jack Landis. Landis was soliciting funds on a charity deal, big funds. Hollister suspected he was a phony. He hired me to check up. Well, I found out Hollister was right. Landis was a phony. Yesterday, I gave Hollister the dope. Today, I dropped ground to pick up the check he promised me and found him with a bullet in his inside. And you figure Landis put it there. Well, what do you think? Well, I think it's worth checking on. I'll have him picked up. Good boy. Landis probably killed Hollister because he knew too much. And since I'm the guy who told Hollister what he knew, Landis might decide to do the same for me. <laughs> Why aren't we laying low, Landis? You heard the radio. They've got the net out for you. Yeah, for me. So what are you worrying about, Whitey? But I'm with you. If it bothers you, you can drop me at Thelma's. Hell, but you're not going up there. Why not? It's the first place the cops will look. In that case, they should be through by the time I get there. So take me there and you can run over to your place in Jersey. Okay, Landis, but believe me, you're asking for trouble. Well, I don't always get what I ask for, Whitey. So stop worrying. <laughs> Jack. Is it such a shock? Uh, no, but the papers say the police are looking for you. Yeah, so I'd better get out of the hall. Close the door. All right. I thought you'd try to get out of town. And leave you? This is pretty risky. Nah, I don't think so. The police will think the same as you. They won't be looking for me in New York. They might. I don't think you're very happy to see me. I'm worried for you. Is that why you forgot to give me a kiss? I'm sorry, here. Hey, baby, it's cold inside. I guess I'm worried. Did you really kill that man? Oh, so that's what's bothering you. Did you? I never pretended I was an angel, sweetheart. But to kill a man... You're doing all right, baby, aren't you? Yes, then but I... Then just remember this. Never look a gift mink in the mouth. I can't help worry. Forget it. We've got work to do. Work? You're going to help me dye my hair. Oh. Does that mean... You'll be staying around a while? You don't sound pleased. I just don't think it's safe. Mm-hmm. I'm beginning to think it wouldn't be safe for me to leave. What do you mean by that? Well, this way I can keep an eye on you. What's on your mind? You've been hinting at something ever since... Ever since I got frostbitten. You won't believe that it's just that I'm worried about you. Sure I will. Only I can't help wondering whether what's worrying you is that I'll get caught... Oh, you will. Who's there? Me. Ellie. Oh, dear. Just a minute. Come in quick. Yeah. I told you on the phone to stay away from here, Elliot. Jack's been hanging around. He also told me he went over to see Whitey Acosta today. But he'll be back. At least it'll give us a chance to talk. We've got to decide what to do. There's nothing we can do. We can turn Landis into the police. I wouldn't dare. He'd kill me. From jail? I have no guarantee they'd hold him. Well, he wouldn't have to know. The police are after him already. Yeah, that's right. We just have to be sure that there's no way of his finding out you had anything to do with a tip-off. He'd be sure to, to suspect that. He doesn't know about me. Maybe I could do something. He suspects there's somebody else, though. He can't be very suspicious or he wouldn't have left you alone. Well, we all make what? mistakes, fella. Jack. Oh, she's always so happy to see me. 
Whitey got kind of boring. I thought things would be more interesting around here. That's why I'm back so soon. Seems I was right. Please, Jack, don't do anything. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? Well, it looks like I'll have to do it myself. I'm Jack Landis. You're, uh... Elliot Crane. Pleased to know you, Mr. Crane. Oh, uh, by the way, Thumb, I want to apologize for this sudden appearance. I had to make it the back way because anyone as popular as I am with the law can't very well be seen riding in elevators. What are you going to do? <laughs> that worries you, does it? Hmm? Or is it this gun that frightens you? Or the fact that you plan to double-cross me? Or uh, maybe the combination, hmm? Oh, why doesn't somebody say something? I don't like to hog the conversation. Well, he do something. I know the look on his face. What can yes, I... Yes, indeed. What can He's you... going to kill us. Oh, now, sweetheart. You know that I... Oh. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm dizzy. Elliot, quick. Yeah. All right, mister, I'll take that gun. Just let me sit down. Sure, sit right there, but I've got the gun. Yeah, so I see. Now, Thelma, you disappoint me. Do you really think I was going to kill you? You had a gun. What would killing you accomplish? Revenge? No, that's true, but it's petty. And you should know, sweetheart, that I'm never petty. He wants to talk his way out of it. Don't let him, Thelma. Call the police while I keep an eye on him. You'll need more than an eye. I also have a gun. Which doesn't happen to be loaded, whereas this one does. Elliot, don't reach for that. I told you it wasn't loaded. That's why I brought along this other one. I, I don't understand. I'll explain it to you in a minute, but first put that gun down on the desk. Go ahead, or do you want me to prove that this one's loaded? I, I'm putting it down. There. That's better. I hate to disappoint you, but you won't be getting this one from me. I don't make a habit of the dizzies. I don't look so worried. I told you I wasn't going to kid you. What are you going to do? I also told you it'd be nothing petty. There's a little narcotic scheme I have in mind that ought to net a quarter of a million. But there's a certain amount of risk involved. And it occurred to me that young Mr. Crane here is just the man to take that risk. He, you want, want me to... To help to... get it past customs. Oh, I, I couldn't. Well, that's up to you. If you don't, Thelma's going to be found with a bullet in her head. And the bullet is going to come from that gun you had, which has got your fingerprints on it. No, please. I... You got your choice. Take orders or face a murder rap. Oh, what can I say? Yes or no. But I hope it'll be yes. Because I promised Thelma that I wouldn't kill her. And I hate to be a liar. But under the circumstances, I don't think I'll have to be. Do you? <laughs> Hello, Waring. Thought I'd find you dead for lunch and that. Ah, oh, Corbett, sit down. Want to pick a rib with me or pick my brain? Uh, I'm looking for a lead. Well, if it's a lead you want, Sergeant, I'll give you one. Oh, hello, Ed. Hi, Sarge. Ah, oh, believe me, in this warm weather, the best lead anyone can give you is a nice, cool salad. Made with Miracle Whip, no doubt. Naturally, because there's nothing like Miracle Whip to give you a really delicious flavor to your salad. You now, know? look, Ed, I know that your salads are good. I know that Miracle Whip makes them the best doggone salads I ever ate. But, uh, well, right now, I've got something else on my mind. Something else? Oh, good grief, Corbett, don't scare him so... Ed doesn't know that there isn't room for more than one thing in your mind. Oh, no, Sergeant. That wasn't what I meant. <laughs> Not at all. I meant there couldn't be something else like Miracle Whip. Honestly, there's nothing like Miracle Whip. It's the only one of its kind. Now, now, Ed, don't get excited. I'd just love to have something to eat. And on a day like this, I'd love nothing more than a good, cool salad made of, well, lots of fresh vegetables and plenty of Miracle Whip. <laughs> but, uh, I, I couldn't eat it here. Couldn't eat it here? Why not? Because when Waring's here, it takes my appetite. Well, then why don't you take your appetite right over to that table in the corner and start eating? <laughs> you know, if I didn't know you fellas so well, I'd think you really meant those things you say to each other. <laughs> okay, Ed. Now bring me a cheese sandwich and one of those salads made with that salad dressing of yours. Oh, well, now, it's not my salad dressing, Sergeant. Miracle Whip is made by Kraft, and by golly, they make it so good that I understand it's America's favorite salad dressing. Hmm. Say, Ed, tell me something. Uh, if you made America's favorite salad and... Uh, Forgot to put Miracle Whip on it. What would you have? Oh, that's easy. America's favorite salad, undressed. Oh, my, my. Well, <laughs> wrap them up, Ed. All right, you will, Mike. Right away. <laughs> now, you, Waring, what can you tell me about Jack Landis? Nothing more than I have. Well, then, what about Whitey Acosta? Never heard of him. Oh, I can see you're not going to be so much help. Well, I'd like to leave a few odds and ends for you. It's good for your morale. Who is this Whitey Acosta, anyway? Well, according to our information, he's Landis's partner. Must have been a silent partner. 
I thought Landis worked the job alone. Well, maybe the girl can tell me something. What girl? Velma Patterson. Landis used to go with her. Have you talked to her yet? No, didn't want to tip her off. We have a man stacked out in front of her building in case Landis comes by, but he hasn't shown, so I guess we'll have to try the girl. Now, what does she look like? Mm, cute, they tell me. Well, Corbett, seeing as how you're over your head again, uh, perhaps I can be persuaded to lend assistance. Yeah. Yeah, I'll question the girl. Oh, thanks. Just the same, Waring, but one of my men can handle it. Well, how will he handle it? Now, me... Who wouldn't I... think of troubling you? It's no trouble. It's a matter of routine. <laughs> if you're amazed how interesting routine can be sometimes. And I have a free evening, so, uh, Corbett, where does she live? <laughs> Hello? Hello, Corbett. Oh, Waring, did the girl succumb to your charms? I haven't seen her yet. Well, then why this call? When I got to her apartment house, there was a crowd in the alley. Been another, another shooting. Huh? Yeah, the night squad is there now. But I thought you'd like to run over, even though you're through for the day. This looks like part of your case. How? Well, you're looking for Landis. Is he there? Yep. Well, what happened? Did he shoot the girl? Uh, not exactly, Corbett. Somebody shot him. <laughs> Elliot, I've got to talk to you. What is it? Jack's been murdered. What? Where? When? Right downstairs, just after you left. Are the police there? Not up here, but there's a big crowd down below. I can see them from the back window. Well, well just sit tight. But the gun with the fingerprints, he had it. Oh, that's right, but we've got to do something. There's somebody at my door. Police? Maybe. Don't tell them a thing. But we'll have to tell Not them. Not now. I'll try to get word to you. All right. Goodbye. I'm coming. Yes? Thelma Patterson? That's right. I'm Sergeant Corbett of the New York Police Department. Police? Why? What's wrong? You used to go with Jack Landis, didn't you? Yes, but When's I... the last time you saw him? Not for weeks. You're sure? Sure you didn't see him today? Of course not. Why? Would it surprise you if I were to tell you Landis was killed today? No. Not any day. Well, you don't seem very upset. I told you, Jack and I have been finished for weeks. Well, we're going to have to ask you some questions. Uh, do we come in? But I don't know anything. Well, who cares? We'd still like to come in. Who is this, Sergeant? Mike Waring. The Falcon? Yeah, you were right, Corbett. Real cute. What? I was hoping we could get acquainted. Now, see here, Mr. Waring. Well, you don't have to worry. Corbett's here to chaperone us. Oh, don't mind me. <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, tell me, do we come in? All right. But I don't know what I can tell you. Well, we'll worry about that when we ask. Come in, Corbett. Yeah, yeah. Now, Miss Patterson, what can you tell us about Whitey Acosta? I don't know any such person. Well, he used to go with Landis. Yes. Whitey was a friend of Landis. I wouldn't know. But you must have met him sometime. Now, hold it, Corbett. Don't mind the sergeant, Thelma. He has to bring in a suspect, so he's a little irritable. You better humor him, or he might decide the suspect is you. But I don't know Well, any... do you know anyone who would know? I don't think... It... Well, wait a minute. And what is it? You might try Happy's Bar. Jack used to hang around there. Perhaps he met this Whitey there. Perhaps someone there may know. No, thanks, Angel. I'll try it. So long. Hey, where are you going, Waring? Happy's Bar. And Corbett, did you learn anything about routine? What's yours, mister? I'm not drinking today. How come you're hanging over a bar? I'm looking for someone. Expect to find them in the bottles? Could be. Are you uh, happy? I'm dancing with joy, can't you see? <laughs> the guy they call Happy, owner of this fire trap. They call me Happy. what they call you? Mike. And when you go formal? Mike Waring. Mike Waring. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard of a falcon by that name once. Uh, well, now that we know each other, do I get some help? Who are you looking for? Whitey Acosta. Whitey, eh? Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, did you drop this 20? Eh, uh, 20... Thanks, Waring. Maybe you'd better come with me. Delighted. Right through, back. This way. All right. You friend of Whitey's? The National Broadcasting Company interrupts this program to bring you a special bulletin. General Matthew Ridgway has accepted the enemy's proposal to meet next Sunday to discuss preliminary plans for a ceasefire in Korea. He asked that a three-man U.N. liaison team be given safe conduct to Kaesong. Keep tuned to your NBC station for the later news. This door right here. 
I'll turn on the light. There's nobody in here. There is. Now. Hey. Hey. Get me out of here. I'd like to, Waring. I'm an obliging guy. And by the way, do you like beer? Yes. Fine. You just sit there like good little boy and keep your mouth shut or you'll get a bottle right between the eyes. <laughs> Hello, Wedding. Oh, I see guns are being worn in the hand these days. Just a precaution, like locking you in here. Mm -hmm. Would you be Whitey Acosta? It's possible. What do you want with him? Rectify an error. Hmm? Somebody hired me to check on Jack Landis. I did, but I stopped short of you. Assuming you are Whitey. What have I got to do with Landis? You worked with him, if you're Whitey. Where'd you hear that? Well, from that famous character. Very reliable source. Source must have a name. I wouldn't be surprised. Was it the girl? What girl? Thelma Patterson. I warned Landis about her. And you admit knowing Landis. Lots of people knew him. But you work for him. I didn't say that. Well, he was a studious type. Liked to travel on wits and charm. Shooting someone down like Hollister seemed a little out of character. Not much, but a little. You could have been his muscles. You're trying to tie the Hollister job to me? It's worth thinking about. It'll take more than thinking. Mm -hmm. Then there's the Landis job. You could have done that. What planned this job? Oh, haven't you heard? He's been killed, too. What? What kind of a gag is that? Oh, believe me, when I try for laughs, I do better than that. It's her. Who? Thelma Patterson. Landis told me he was going to put a heel on crane in her. Oh, when did he tell you this? Today. And you saw him today. So I saw him today. Make something out of it. It was early. And he was going to turn on the heat, huh? Yeah. They must have had enough heat already. So it works backward, and they sick you onto me so as I can take the rap. Yeah, it adds up. Yeah, you're pretty good at figures, Whitey, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. All I got to get ahead of is that girl. Well, maybe I can help you. If you'll help me. What can you do? If you're telling the truth, plenty. So how's for putting away that heater and letting me add it, huh? Homicide, Sergeant Corbett speaking. Hello, Corbett. I found Whitey Acosta. Good. Now you can lose him. What? The case is all wrapped up without Whitey. Well, bully for you. What happened? Well, we found the gun, and it has fingerprints on it. Mm -hmm. Who's are they? <laughs> Who's do you think? Well, offhand, I'd guess the girl. Well, what do you know? He wins the gold-plated uppers. Yeah, you're right, Waring. The murder gun shows a nice, clear set of Thelma Patterson's prints. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. I am no detective, but I do know that things look bad for Thelma right now. After all, no two fingerprints are the same. Each one is distinctive, different. All of which reminds me to tell you about distinctive, delicious Miracle Whip. There's no other salad dressing like it. Miracle Whip has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip it tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip only one of its kind. Miracle Whip the best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise, so it's truly distinctive and delicious with a flavor millions of folks call. Just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A few hours have passed since Corbett told Mike the case was as clear as Thelma's fingerprints on the murder gun. However, Thelma insists on her innocence. And now at headquarters, she's trying to prove it to the Falcon and Corbett. But, Sergeant, I cooperated with you before, didn't I? Why won't you believe me now? Well, I'd like to, but I believe fingerprints even more. But I can explain about them. Well, go ahead. Jack came and threatened me if I wouldn't hide him out. I pulled a gun to protect myself and chased him out of the apartment. And then somebody must have stolen the gun and killed him. Well, that makes real sense. Well, it might, Corbett, at that. Yeah, Waring? Well, who'd know about the gun? Who'd have opportunity to steal it? I can think of one person. Yeah, who? Her boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. Not since Jack. Oh. Well, Corbett, looks like we're ready for Whitey. Yeah. Levine. 
Yes, Sergeant. Bring us Whitey Acosta. Yes, sir. You found Whitey? But he doesn't know... Oh, we'll see what he knows. You want me, Sergeant? Yeah, Whitey. Waring tells me you saw Landis today. That's right. Did he say anything to you about the girl? Yeah. He suspects she found herself a new playmate. Said he was going to find out if she had, he was going to make things hot for them. So that's your evidence. Jack suspected. A lot that proves. Well, don't be impatient, sweetheart. We have more. Yeah. Levine. Yes, Sergeant. Let's have Crane. Yes, sir. Crane? Elliot Crane. You know, he's going to be disappointed about you telling us you got no boyfriend. He had an idea he was it. Thelma, are you all right? Elliot, how much... What have you told him? Everything. The whole truth. I had to. Well, that's more than we can say for your girlfriend. I wanted to keep Elliot out of this. But as long as you found out about him anyway, I might as well tell the truth now. Well, that'll be nice for a change. Well, Elliot and I were together. And... Jack came in with a gun. Yeah, I told him about me getting the gun, so that's why my prints would be on Let her tell it, Elliot. But it was like Elliot says... All right, that explains his prints, except the murder gun had yours, not his. I know. What's that? You didn't tell me about... I can explain. Jack ordered us to obey him. And then he left with the gun that had Elliot's fingerprints on it. He picked it up with a handkerchief in his hand so the fingerprints wouldn't be destroyed. And then Elliot and I talked for a little while, and then he left. What did you decide? I was going to do what Landis wanted. Because I didn't want anything to happen to Thelma. I said let her tell it. Sorry. That's the way it was. Anyway, a little later I went out and I went through the alley. It's a shortcut to the next street. And there was Jack, dead, and the gun nearby. The one with Crane's prints? I was afraid it was the same gun, so I picked it up and wiped off the prints. And then I heard someone coming, so I ducked into a doorway. And... And, and I held the gun in case I'd have to use it to get away. That's how I got my prints. Oh, you admit you were going to use a gun in a getaway. Well, I couldn't be found there with the gun. I knew how it would look. Wouldn't look any worse than it does now. I was frightened. I, I wasn't thinking too clearly. Anyway, whoever came hurried away. I, I, I guess to call the police. I was in such a panic by that time I just dropped the gun and ran. And you expect us to believe that? Oh, why not, Corbett? People do screwy things when they're scared. Don't tell me you believe her, Waring. Well, since she didn't kill Landis, I don't see why not. Who says she didn't kill Landis? Whitey says so, because he did it. What? Whitey! That's right, Corbett. Whitey's the murderer. So go ahead, make your arrest. All right, Waring. Whitey killed Landis because they had the hundred grand from the charity swindle stashed away, and Whitey decided to keep the whole pile for himself. Ah, that's right, Corbett. Yeah. And he felt sure we'd pin the killing on Elliot Crane or the girl Thelma. That's why he was willing to cooperate with us. But where'd he slip up? Well, he said when Landis visited him that Landis suspected Thelma had another boyfriend. But Landis didn't confirm it till later. Yeah, so? But when I first saw Whitey, he specifically named Crane. In fact, that's how I was able to locate Crane. Oh, yeah. So that meant Whitey had seen Landis again after the visit to the girl, Mm -hmm. which puts him at the murder scene. Landis took Whitey along for protection and left him waiting outside to be ready if anything went wrong, just like he did at Hollister's. And Whitey killed him. (laughs) Some protection. Well, he shouldn't have been surprised. If a man puts his life in the hands of a gunman, he's playing with gunfire. Do you like rich, delicious, chocolate-flavored malteds? Well, you can make a malted just like that right in your own kitchen with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Just make a tasty paste of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk and a little milk in the bottom of a big glass. Fill the glass with chilled milk, stir it once more, and there. A Kraft malted is mighty nourishing, too, because it's filled with all the food values in milk. Get a jar of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk from your grocer and enjoy a Kraft malted often. The Case of the Vanishing Varmint. The Case of the Vanishing Varmint. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that dead bodies, like bad pennies, always turn up. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on a famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Jerome Epstein, and directed by Richard Lewis. 
Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. Friends, 175 years ago, a small group of Americans signed the Declaration of Independence. Today, more than ever before, let's remember that the freedoms that great document provides us must be preserved by eternal vigilance. This is Ed Hurley, he's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Here, it pays to be ignorant tonight on NBC. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Alice. I'm glad you called. You'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm busy on a case. Some boy I know is coming over from Sing Sing, and I wish he wouldn't. To me, it sounds like a bad break. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Vanishing Varmint. Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing. Try it yourself. See why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Now, the case of the vanishing varmint. It's Wednesday evening in Manhattan. And upstate, a gentleman named Paul McKenzie is taking life easy. Not that Mr. McKenzie is lazy. He's not working because he had an argument with the state of New York, and unfortunately, he came out second best. All right, McKenzie, inside. Oh, hiya, Mac. Drop dead, would you? I don't know what's the matter with you. Is that the New York paper? Yeah. Let's see it, Wayne. I'm doing a crossword puzzle. You know a five-letter word for burglar? You trying to be funny? No, oh, see, 17 across. Ah, oh, give me that. What'd you do that for? You broke the point on my pencil. Well, that's just two. Hey, what are you doing now? I'm sharpening the point on the windowsill. Let's see that. Ah, cut it out, Mac. I ain't hurting nothing. Let me see that point. Hey, that's not bad. You can get it real sharp like that. I always say concrete is as good as sandpaper. Is that what you always say? Yeah. When I was a kid... Shut up. Why don't you draw a kitchen duty again? Tomorrow. Swell. Why don't you rob me a spoon? A spoon? That's right. Why should I? Now, look, Wayne, we're friends, aren't we? No. What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? All I want's a crummy spoon. Who's going to miss it? I'm not going to do it, man. It's not like I was asking for a knife. I said I'm not... I said you... Uh... <coughs> well... Why do you want it for? You gotta have a reason for everything. Just give me a spoon. That's all I ask. Hey, Wayne. Wayne, wake up. Mm. Well, let me alone, Mac. Come on, dopey. Wake up. <laughs> Keep your voice down. You understand? Where, where'd you get that knife? Remember the spoon you got me last week? Yeah. Just shows what a little homework will do. I filed it down. How? The same way you sharpen your pencil. Turned out real keen. Don't you think? Cut it out. Well, pay attention. You're gonna bust out? What do you think? You're crazy. Like a fox. And you're coming with me. Oh, no. Don't get me wrong, Wayne. I'm not that fond of your company, but I need another guy to work this. 
Now get back in your cot and keep mom. Don't you open your yap for anything. What are you going to do? The less you know, the less you'll have to worry about. Hey, Daniels! Daniels! All right, what's the trouble, McKenzie? There's something the matter with Wayne. Huh? Wayne? Wayne? I don't think he's breathing. What happened? I don't know. I saw him swallow a pill. A what? Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. All right, stand back. I'm coming in. You think maybe it was poison? What's the matter with you, Wayne? Can I help you turn him over, Mac? Don't bother, Daniels. He'll be okay. Huh? Too bad I can't say the same for you. No, you... You, you killed him. Well, what are you waiting for? Applause? Let's go. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mike Waring, please. Isn't this Sergeant Corbett? Mike? Who else? How are you, bright eyes? Busy. But I thought you might be interested in this flash that just came over the teletype. Here, I'll read it to you. Paul McKenzie and Wayne Thompson broke out of jail tonight at 9.30, maybe headed for New York. These men are dangerous. Use caution and apprehending. So? Well, doesn't it mean anything to you? Should it? I think so. Remember the Weber holdup a few years back? You represented the insurance company. Oh, yeah. McKenzie was the boy we grabbed. As I recall, he was kind of peeved at you. Didn't he make a couple of threats? I was just blowing off steam. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Frankly, I don't. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Mike. Hope I get to do it again sometime. Just a second. Just a second. Yes? Hello, Harris. McKenzie. Shut the door. Huh? Oh, yeah. What's the matter, Harris? You act like you're seeing a ghost. It's your old boss, remember? Yeah, but I heard on the radio that... What? That a car with you and what's-his-name... Wayne? Yeah, went off a drawbridge near Sing Sing. Well, I wasn't in it. We separated as soon as we got over the walls. Was there anything else? No. What about the guard I knifed? They say he's going to pull through. I guess this is my lucky day. How did you get to town? What do you think? Well, you certainly didn't come by the super chief. I rode the rods. Give me some soap. I want to wash you up. Yeah, sure, man. What do you hear from Ruth? Ruth? Ruth Nelson, stupid. I haven't seen her in months, Mac. I told you to keep an eye on her. Hand me that song. Yeah. Well? Well, what? What do you got to say for yourself? Oh, be reasonable, Mac. I couldn't follow Ruth around. Why not? Well, let's skip that for now. There's lots more important things to do. Such as? Such as getting you out of the country. I don't be a chump, Harris. I'm staying right here. What? You're out of your mind. That's the trouble with people who don't spend any time in jail. You don't appreciate your own hometown. You forget the attractions. I got a beautiful girl in New York and about a quarter of a million in bonds. Yes, I know, Mike, but... Good, because I want them both here by 5 o'clock tonight. <laughs> Change much, honey? Nah. You look better than ever. Okay, Harris, beat it. But I thought you wanted. What's the matter? Don't you understand English? Go on, blow. Find yourself somewhere else to flop tonight. All right, Mike. But be careful, will you? Stop being such a worry, Ward. I'll be okay. Come here, baby. Gosh, Mac. Wonderful to have you back. <laughs> you miss Papa, huh? Yes. Why don't you keep in touch with Harris? You know how I always felt about him. Oh, he's okay. Oh, hey, that reminds me. I was so tickled to see him, I forgot to ask. Where are the bonds? Bonds? Yeah, before I went up... Oh, here. those. Well, I didn't bring them along. Why not? Well, when Harris first told me you were here, I thought he was kidding. Well, you can see he wasn't. I want you to pick him up the second thing in the morning. What do you mean, second thing? Mike Waring's still around. Who? The private deck they call a falcon. I don't know. Well, first thing tomorrow, Ruth, you find out and uh, make an appointment for me. What for? You'll find out when I talk to Waring. You know how I hate to repeat myself. That's funny he doesn't answer. 
answer. Maybe, maybe he's gone out for a while. Yeah. What are you going to do, Mac? Make myself comfortable while I wait. I think this one ought to do the trick. Well, what do you know? You see, old man hasn't lost his touch, eh, Ruthie? Oh, Mac, now listen to inside. me. Inside. But honey... I said inside. Now, uh, what were you going to say? Mike Waring's not going to like this. That'll teach him not to break dates with yours truly. No, I guess you're right. What do you mean, you guess? Aren't you sure? I only meant... Wait a minute. Did you make an appointment with Waring for me? Well, of course I did. Then how come he isn't here? I, I don't know. You're lying. All right, so I am. I never called Waring. No? Honest, Mac, I was only thinking of your welfare. I'll bet you would. <coughs> Next time I tell you to do something, you do it. I don't need any mastermind. So that's the thanks I get. You kidding? I got news for you, sweetheart. Even at Sing Sing, I heard a couple of stories about you. They're about me and Arnold Lucas. They were lies. What was her name again? Lucas? Come on, answer me. Let me alone. Talk up, Ruthie. I'm going to know the score. I'm at to break every bone in your lovely body. I'm warning you, Mac. Stay away from me. You're warning me. <laughs> Go on, laugh, you big ape. If you put a finger on me and I'll put a finger on you and we'll see who yells louder. Mr. Weary? Yes, that's right. I've been waiting for you out here since... 10.30. Well, that's a switch. They generally wait inside. Your pardon? Skip it. You're, um... Susan Andrews. Well, what's on your mind, Miss Andrews? It's Mrs. Andrews. I'm staying at the Renard Apartments. Mm-hmm. Well, you've still got something on your mind. Well, couldn't we talk inside? Well, sure. Come right in, Mrs. Ant... Oh, on second thought, stay right where you are. Oh, what... Oh, oh. stop it. it. Is he dead? Well, if he isn't, he's as reasonable a facsimile as you can get with two slugs in the brain. That's Paul McKenzie, isn't it? Who? Paul McKenzie, one one of the men who broke out of jail yesterday. How would you know? I recognized him from his picture. Funny. I never would have. Who are you calling? The police. Do you mind? What's the matter? The line has been cut. All right, Mrs. Andrews, you stay right here till I get back. Yes, but what about McKenzie? I wouldn't worry. In his condition, I think we can prevail upon him to hang around, too. Oh, you're out of your mind, Mike. Mackenzie was in the car with Wayne when it went off that drawbridge near Sing Sing. Mm-hmm. Well, have they discovered the bodies yet, Sergeant? Well, no. Uh, I tell you, they never will. At least not Mackenzie's, because he's right here in my place. Oh. Mrs. Andrews? Mrs. Andrews? Looks like nobody's home. I don't get it, Corbett. I left her standing right but by... Holy smoke, what happened to the body? What body? I told you, Mackenzie's. It was lying right there near the sofa. Look, Mike, if you've got nothing better to do... You've got to believe me, Corbett. Why would I make up a yarn like that? That's what I'm wondering. But whatever your reason is, it better be funny. I tell you, the line was cut. Seems to be all right now. Well, they must have patched it. Oh, sure, sure. Where was this Mrs. Andrews living? At the Reynard Apartments. Oh, that's plumbing 1222, isn't it? Now, go ahead. But you're wasting your time, Sergeant. Whoever removed Mackenzie must have taken her along for the ride. She won't be in. I know. There's only one question in my mind. Whether she ever was. Look, are you calling me... Now, keep quiet. Reynard Apartments? Uh, You got a Mrs. Susan Andrews registered there? Hello? Mrs. Susan Andrews? Yes, that's right. Hey, there is such a person. She's there now. Let me talk to her. Wait your turn. Hello? Hello? Hello, Mrs. Andrews. This is Sergeant Corbett of the police. Did you ever hear of a private detective named Mike Waring? Waring? No, I don't believe I have. Oh, then you weren't at his place this morning? Well, I don't see how I could be. Your call just woke me. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Andrews. You know any more funny stories, Mike? I'm just dying to hear them. Well, I'm still waiting, Mike. What was the idea of the gag? I tell you, it was no gag, Sergeant. Well, then how do you explain it? I can't. I just don't get it, that's all. Oh, if you're referring to your sandwich, Mike's coming right up. Oh, and 
And just wait till you see what else Ed's luncheonette has for you. Can you guess what it is? Oh, please, Eddie, I'm in no mood to play guessing games. I'm not able to think on an empty stomach. Oh, what puzzles me is how you're able to think on an empty head. Uh, But, Mike, look, just try to guess. Think of cool, shimmering beauty. A real attractive dish. A beautiful tomato? Where is she? Uh, No, no, Mike, not a girl. It's a real tomato filled with cream cheese. A nice, cool salad for summer. All right, fine. Bring it on. I'm hungry. But but guess what else I'd do with this salad to pep it up? You probably use a salad dressing. Mike, you're psychic. Uh, yeah, he can figure out everything but the case he's working on. Oh, but he's right, Sergeant. This salad needs a dressing to pep it up. So I add a swell, peppy flavor by using... Guess what? Look, if I say the right thing, will you make me queen for a day? Well, I can't do that, but you know the answer. It's Miracle Whip, Mike. Boy, that stuff is wonderful. It, it's just right. You know, not too sharp or too mild. Just right. Mm-hmm. What more could you ask for? Guess. Huh? Guess what more I could ask for. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Here's a delicious tomato salad filled with cream cheese and topped with America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip. A salad dressing that tastes so different, folks call it the one and only... Now, what more could you possibly ask for? Just one thing, Eddie. Can't you guess? No, no, Mike. I give up. What is it? Will you please bring the salad and sandwich? What are you waiting for? Get on the ball. Oh, sure, Mike. Why didn't you say so? Hey, you better get on the ball yourself, Mike. You claim Mackenzie was in your place this morning? I tell you, he was. Yeah, that's what you've been telling me all day. Don't you think it's time now that you furnished a little proof? Yes? Hello, Mrs. Andrews. Remember me? Mr. Waring? Yes, Angel, Mr. Waring. Won't... Won't you come in? Try and keep me out. All right, now what's this all about? What's what all about? Listen, Susie, I'm in no mood for evasions. You saw me find Mackenzie's body this morning. I? Yes, you. I want to know why you lied about it on the phone. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I don't often strike a woman, but in your case... No, wait a minute, wait. It's coming back to you now, Mr. Waring, why don't you forget about it? Make believe it never happened. Have the cops think I'm crazy for the rest of my life? Oh, no. Now, what went on in that apartment after I left? please. Look, I'll make it easy for you. You had a visitor, didn't you? Yes. Who was he? He didn't tell me his name. Well, what did he tell you? Just to keep my mouth shut. Otherwise... Well, never mind. I can imagine what that otherwise was. Then what happened? He picked up Mackenzie's body and disappeared. No, no. It wasn't as simple as that, Susie. You don't walk around the streets of New York with a dead body on your hands. It might cause talk. How did he get rid of it? He had a car waiting near the service entrance. And you followed him? Well, I... Now, don't lie, Susie. You must have. What was the license number? I didn't think to copy it down. Look, I'm warning you, no, Angel. No, w- wait a minute. Let me get my purse. It, uh... It was 8L463. All right. Thank you, Susie. You've been a great help. I think I can take it from here. <laughs> Well, I'm looking for a gentleman named Larry Harris. What do you want? My name is Mike Waring. That still leaves me in the dark. I don't see why, Harris. You were up to my place this morning, weren't you? Where'd you get that screwy idea? You own a 51 Nash, license number 8L463, don't you? No. Well, you better inform the license bureau. According to their records, the car belongs to you. What if it does? It was parked near the service entrance to my building today. Oh. What did you do with Mackenzie's body? Well, strictly between us, Waring, I don't see how that's any of your business. Now, that's where you're wrong, Harris. When someone uses my place for a slaughterhouse, it concerns me vitally. Yeah, I suppose when you look at it that way, you've got a beef. Would, um, 500 bucks take care of it? Only if I can take it out in information. Now, look, fella, let me give you a little tip. Nobody's been hurt. Except McKenzie. It's no skin off your nose, forget it. And if I don't? Someone's liable to get sore at you. Who might that be? I don't like to mention names, but it might be me. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, my arm. What's the matter, Harris? Can't you stand a little pressure? Oh, cut it. I'm wearing you. You're breaking Well, that ought to convince you that I mean business. Now, what was your tie-up with Mackenzie? You can go. Oh. Come on, spill it. We were friends. He was holed up here last night. Why did he want to see me? I don't know. You sure? I, I, I tell you, I don't know. Well, would you know what happened to all that money he had stashed away? What money? Mackenzie was serving time for a payroll robbery. I was the one who sent him up, but we never recovered the loot. I never saw a penny of it. Then who did? The, he... 
He spent it all on his girlfriend before they caught him. That sounds like a physical impossibility. It was close to a quarter of a million dollars. You don't know this girl. No, but I'd like to. What's her name? Ruth Nelson. All right, just one more thing. Did you kill Mackenzie? And then go back to your place and remove his body? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe Ruth Nelson can help me arrive at some satisfactory answer. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like a... I wait a minute. You're no waiter. I still wouldn't mind serving you. Can I buy you a drink? Aren't you afraid I might have a jealous boyfriend? If you have, you probably know the best way to handle him. Sit down. Thanks. A waiter, two scotch and sodas here. Right away, Mr. Waring. What did he call you? Why, did it sound insulting? Is your name Waring? Well, I was keeping it for surprise, Ruth. Beat it. Now, what kind of hospitality do you call that? I didn't turn you out when you dropped in at my place. What do you mean? Weren't you there this morning with Mackenzie? No. <laughs> You'll have to do better than that, Ruth. I couldn't forget that perfume. Voodoo, isn't it? Did Max send you over to apologize? Why should he? Didn't he tell you he slapped me around? Well, what did you do, walk out? Wouldn't you? Well, I wasn't going steady with him, so it's hard to say. Well, where does he get off accusing me of two-timing him with Arnold Lucas? Weren't you? No. Mac doesn't believe me he can check it with Arnold. You'll find him at the Granger Hotel. I kind of doubt that. Incidentally, Ruth, uh, you wouldn't happen to know why Mackenzie wanted to see me in the first place. Didn't he tell you? He couldn't very well, Angel. When I first saw him, he was dead. Dead? Uh, murdered, to be exact. Is this a gag? Hardly. Listen, Waring, Arnold had nothing to do with this. Who said he did? Well, I, I thought... If you did... did, Ruth, that's good enough for me. I'll be seeing you, Angel. <laughs> Who is it? Telegram for Arnold Lucas. Would you be kind enough to sleep it under the door? Sorry, mister. You got a sign for it. Just a moment. Hello. You are not from the Western Union. Well, I tried to enlist, but they wouldn't have me. Who are you? Waring is the name. Mike Waring. What can I do for you, Mr. Waring? Well, it's a long story, Lucas. You mind if I make myself comfortable while I tell it? Please do. Thanks. May I uh, offer you something? Just a couple of answers. You see, I'm a private detective. How interesting. Yes, you get to meet a lot of dull people that way. I'll never guess how I got in touch with you. Perhaps not. Ever hear of a man named Paul McKenzie? Once or twice? Well, he's dead. How sad. Yes, very. But you can dry those tears, fella. I think I know where to locate his murderer. How did you accomplish that? Well, I had several fine leads. An automobile license plate led me to Larry Harris. Harris? I don't believe I've had the pleasure... No, but you do have a mutual friend, Ruth Nelson. Oh? Yes, ah, she's a wonderful gal, Lucas. Glad you appreciate her fine qualities. <laughs> I'd be an ingrate if I didn't. After all, she gave me you. But not for keep. Huh? Oh, hello, Ruth. What are you doing here? You're the boy who knows all the answers. Well, judging from that gun in your hand, there could only be one. Never let it be said that you can't put two and two together. Hello, Arnold. Darling, it was so nice of you to drop in. It was a pleasure. Yes. Well, if I'm in your way, folks... Come back here, Waring. I just thought you two might like to be alone. We have plenty of opportunity for that later. Well, I don't know, Lucas. You better act fast before the police grab you. I don't think there's any danger of that. You're wrong, Ruth. I've got your boyfriend dead to rights. And that's where you're wrong, Waring, because in a couple of minutes, he'll have you dead. Period. <laughs> Well, Ruth pointing a gun at him really poses a question as to Mike's future. Let's hope he has the right answer. But I don't need anybody to point a gun at me to give you the one right answer to the question of what to use as a dressing for salad. The answer? Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. Has the flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise, so it's truly distinctive and delicious with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. 
Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Only a minute has passed since Ruth Nelson made her dramatic entrance into Arnold Lucas's apartment with a gun and promptly aimed it at Mike Waring's head. And now, as we find the gay trio, Ruth seems determined to get down to business. All right, Waring. If you've got any final requests, now's the time to make them. Now, Ruth, you know you're not serious about this. Well, you bet. Well, I've got nothing against you. No, but you've got plenty against Arnold. Who told you he was wanted in Los Angeles? No one. So you figured it out all by yourself, Mr. Waring. Oh, he's a smart one, Arnold. Wouldn't take him long to guess. Mac went to his office. It could only be for one reason. He wanted Waring to make a deal for him with the police. He's wasting his time, Ruth. I never would have accepted it. Why not? Mackenzie owed the police plenty for the payroll robbery and a little extra something for that jailbreak. Lucas would really have to be wanted pretty badly for the cops to forgive and forget. No, you never can tell. Well, no, that's true enough. Well, now that you know it all, what do you intend to do about it? Well, it's up to you. How right you are. And since it's my move... I better move faster. <coughs> Come on, drop it. Let go. Oh. Oh. Arnold. Arnold. Get out of the way. I didn't mean it. Let me take a look at him. Oh. What's going on here? Uh, oh, come in, Harris. You're just in time. I heard a shot. What happened? Well, can't you see? I didn't mean to kill him. Well, cheer up, Ruth. You didn't. What? Uh, oh, it's just a flesh wound. But you're a very careless girl. Well, anyone would have done the same in my place. I had to protect him. Yes, I guess you can't blame her, Waring. When a gal goes for a guy, there's nothing she won't do. Even try to cover him when she's seen him commit murder. Well, who should know that better than you, Harris? Meaning what? Meaning you're the guy she's in love with. You're the one she's shielding. What? What are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry if I let the cat out of the bag, Ruth, but uh, when it comes to murder, I'm just a great big blabbermouth. Hello, Susie. You remember me? Mike. I hope it's not too late, but uh, I came over to regale you with the saga of my triumph. Oh, I heard all about it on the radio, but um, come in anyway. Oh, thanks. I heard on the radio Harris killed Mackenzie. You heard right. But why? I thought they were friends. To the end. Only Harris saw to it that Mackenzie's end came a lot sooner than it normally would. Mm -hmm. And when Mackenzie went to jail, he left a quarter of a million dollars worth of loot with his girlfriend, Ruth Nelson. Oh, and she and Harris. Mm hmm. Well, um, where does this Arnold Lucas fit in? Oh, he was the patsy in this little affair. Ruth led Mackenzie to believe it was Lucas who was his rival. When all along it was his boy Harris. Hmm? That's it. Well, what put you on the right track? Ruth. She was the one who sicked me onto Lucas originally, and then she volunteered the information that he was wanted in Los Angeles. And on top of that, she tried to kill Lucas in front of me. I thought that was an accident. Uh, don't be silly. That gal knew what she was doing. Why do you think I had such an easy time disarming her? Does that answer all your questions? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Now we can start on mine. I uh, didn't have time to ask you before, but uh, what were you doing in front of my apartment so early in the morning? Well... As I told you, I wanted to see you. What about? Getting the evidence for a divorce. Oh, well, I don't generally handle that kind of work, Susie, but uh, for you, I might make an exception. What would you tell me about your husband? Oh, he's handsome, mm -hmm. charming, mm -hmm. and cultured. Mm -hmm. Everything a woman could want. Well, now, wait a minute. You sound like you're still in love with the guy. I am. Ah? Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. After I saw you this afternoon, I thought it over and called him. He should be here any minute. Well, that's nice. Oh, Mike, it was all my fault. I made a mistake. I was just counting on him to call me first. Well, don't feel too badly, Susie. We all make mistakes. <laughs> I was counting on something, too. But Mike, where are you going? Home. Good night, Mrs. Andrews. Rich, delicious, chocolate-flavored malted milk. Sounds mighty good, doesn't it? And it is, too. But listen to this. You make it in your own kitchen. That's right. Make it yourself with Kraft's wonderful chocolate-flavored malted milk. Here's how simple and easy it is to do. Make a tasty paste of some Kraft malted milk and a little milk in the bottom of a tall glass. Fill that glass with chilled milk. Stir it again, and there you have it. A delicious Kraft malted. And because it's full of all the food values in milk, it's nourishing as well. So why not enjoy a Kraft malted often? Just get a jar of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk from your grocer tomorrow. The Case of the Cautious Cousin. The 
The Case of the Cautious Cousin. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that when a family fortune is in the balance, the scales can be tipped toward murder. So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Here it pays to be ignorant tonight on NBC.